Smith & Wesson was founded in 1852, and since then it has become an iconic brand. The company has produced several legendary firearms, such as the Model 29, which gained fame after being featured in the Dirty Harry series, Model 10, introduced in 1899, which became one of the most widely used police revolvers in history, with over 6 million units produced. Or the Victory model, which served as a standard sidearm for the US Navy and other Allied forces during World War II. Today, Smith & Wesson remains one of the undisputed leaders in the US firearms market. But recent financial results are not impressive. Revenue is up by 0.2% year-over-year, net income is down by 6.3%, cash reserves have decreased by 36%, and debt has risen by 181%, which is a concerning trend. But there is a good reason for this increase in debt, and we will get to it in a minute. What is important to mention is that we should be looking at the big picture. As long as we believe in the long-term strength of the company, short-term problems like those results can create opportunities. However, if we think those results are a beginning of some long-term issues, then we should avoid investing in it. Also, we should note that the management is optimistic that the future quarters should be much better. And they are predicting a growth of high single digits to low double digits. So it's going to be interesting to see how this story develops. Okay, so far we found only one reason to even consider Smith & Wesson as an investment idea, and that is their brand and long-term market position. But to find some less obvious reasons, we have to dig a bit deeper and analyze this company. So uh, let's do that. If you were to invest $1,000 into this company 10 years ago, you could buy around 100 shares. And now they would be worth something close to $1,474. And this company also pays dividends. So in that time, you would get $148 as dividends. So if we add together those numbers, we get $1,622. And that is a gain of 62.2% in 10 years. That is not bad, not incredible, but uh, not bad. Individual Insiders, that is an X. 1.2% of the company is owned by Individual Insiders. And we would like to see this number over 2%, so not quite there, but not that bad. And are Individual Insiders buying? That is an X. In the last half a year, Individual Insiders sold over 13,000 shares. And do super investors own this company? That is a check with only one super investor, and it is one of my favorite investors, Norbert Liu. If you would like to learn a bit more about him and his investment strategy, uh, here, yeah, I, I think here is the link to my analysis of his portfolio. And is he buying right now? That is a next. We don't see any transactions from Norbert Liu since Q3 2022. Return on invested capital, that is a check at 12.2% 10-year median returns. And we want to see this number higher than 10%, so a nice return. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is a check at 10.2% annually over the last five years. And the sector median is 4.7%. So they have a lot of pricing power, which just emphasizes their brand strength. And now let's take a look at share buyback. 
It is a check with 18.5% of shares bought back in the last 10 years. That is some very good news for long-term investors. And we know that the company is continuing buying back shares. And the debt, it is also a check. It would take over half a year to pay the long-term debt with a five-year average free cash flow. I'm using a five-year average free cash flow and not the recent one because it is a cyclical industry. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the debt went up substantially in the last year. And the reason for it is that Smith & Wesson has been investing in its operations, including the ramp up of production capabilities and the establishment of a brand new facility. The company aims to achieve a debt-free status by the end of the calendar year. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Revenue growth. That is an X at minus 1.6% 10-year compound annual growth rate. Not great. And free cash flow growth. That is also an X at minus 3.8% in the last 10 years. Well, also not great. And earnings per share growth. That is an X at minus 5.3% in the last 10 years. So all growth metrics are negative. That is very bad. But it is a cyclical business. So if we would look, for example, at the last five years, the results would be much different. Revenue plus 2.2% annually and earnings per share plus 22.4% annually. But free cash flow would actually look even worse with minus 36.5%. And that is just the beauty of cyclical industries. They are not as obvious and easy to understand or analyze. But if we get it right, the rewards can be, well, interesting. The dividend yield is 4.1%, so shareholders can expect to get 52 cents annually per every share. And the payout ratio? That is an X at 64%. And we want to see the payout ratio somewhere between 20 and 50%. So it is close, but a bit on the risky side. We are getting over half of the earnings as dividends and that does not leave a lot of cash for growth. And what about dividend growth? It is a check at 21.5% three-year growth rate. We usually look at five years, but they started to pay dividends in 2020, so it is too early for that. We also know that Smith & Wesson Board of Directors authorized an 8.3% increase in the quarterly dividend recently. So this growing dividend is definitely something we should not overlook while making our investment decision. Price to earnings ratio is 15. So not that high. We basically have to pay $15 for every dollar this company earns. And for our discounted cash flow analysis, we will be using a five-year average free cash flow because this industry is very cyclical. So we want to average things out to get a better feel of where this company is at. So in the low scenario, we will estimate no growth for the entire 10 years. In the medium, 3% for the first five years and then 2%. And in the high scenario, 6% and then 5% growth. So the low scenario is predicting that in the next 10 years, this company will not grow at all, which as history shows is possible. Medium is showing a story in which Smith & Wesson will grow substantially slower than the industry. And the high one is close to the predicted growth of the industry, which is 6.6% in the next few years. 
So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $20, in the medium $25, and in the high scenario $31. But we have to always apply a margin of safety to those prices. I use a 30% one. And with such a margin, we get in the low scenario $14, in the medium $17, and in the high one $21. And the current price is around $12. So it is all in the green. It seems that Smith & Wesson is currently very nicely priced. So let's go to our Stock Ranking Pro, where you can find all the data about all the companies we ever analyzed on this channel. And you can get access to it by becoming a Patreon. And let's take a look at the overview of Smith & Wesson. So financial health and dividends are definitely strong points for this company. But investor sentiment is weak and we see no growth in the last 10 years. So if you are looking for a fast-growing, trendy company, this might not be the right fit for you. However, if stability, security, and dividends align with your investment strategy, then Smith & Wesson is definitely worth considering. So it's a mixed situation. On one hand, we can see at least four reasons to consider Smith & Wesson as an investment idea. Strong brand, growing dividends, financial health, and an interesting price. On the other hand, what is worrying is a slow growth and regulatory risks. We cannot forget that the firearms industry is highly sensitive to political and social factors. And changes in gun control laws can significantly impact sales and profitability. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.